Growing Vitis vinifera in northern climates such as BC comes with known challenges. However, extreme weather events where temperatures go beyond what the plant can reasonably adapt to have been occurring more regularly over the last few years, causing a need to shift strategies for managing the vines. This video is the result of seasoned BC viticulturists sharing their experiences and processes for making decisions when faced with such events. Often you ask, how do you know when a freeze event may have occurred? The Cold Hardiness Report is the first tool available to BC grape growers. It is a bi-weekly cold hardiness report put out by Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada and available through the BC Grape Growers website. Grape variety buds from across the Okanagan are exposed to decreasing temperatures in a controlled setting until the bud tissue damage occurs. Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada has a machine that is able to pick up on the small amounts of energy released when the bud tissue freezes. The report is then provided with the temperature at which half the buds died as the lower temperature exotherm 50, or commonly called LTE 50. The LTE 50 fluctuates throughout the winter as the vines harden off or come out of dormancy. The value can vary between locations, grape varieties, and some management practices. The report can be useful when trying to predict if a weather event might have been a cause for concern. For example, you have a vineyard in the southeast of Asoyuz with Merlot and Chardonnay in the vineyard. The forecast calls for temperatures to drop to minus 22 on January 10th. The report shows the LTE 50 in your area for Merlot to be minus 20.3 and Chardonnay to be minus 24.2. Thus, the negative 22 LTE 50 is colder than the minus 20.3 and could cause at least 50% bud mortality in your Merlot. But it's warmer than minus 24.2, so your Chardonnay has a good chance of being okay. Another general guideline with the LTE 50 values is that you can subtract two degrees to determine level of minor damage, such as 10% bud damage, or add two degrees to determine the level of complete or 90% damage to the buds. So with our example, the Merlot might have experienced up to 90% loss, whereas the Chardonnay may have only experienced a 10% loss. If you suspect crop or any type of vine loss from a weather event, your first action should be to contact your production insurance representative to submit a notice of loss prior to undertaking any resulting management decisions in the vineyard. What do you do if you suspect bud damage? Bud sampling is the next recommended management step. You need to know where the damage occurred to determine what decisions you will need to make in pruning. Wait to conduct bud sampling at least three days after the extreme weather event has occurred. How much to sample can be determined by suspected levels of damage based on the LTE 50. If temperatures were below the LTE 50 and large scale damage is expected, a sample size of 150 buds over a uniform area should give accurate enough results. However, if temperatures were within 2 degrees above the LTE 50, then you can choose a sample size of 100 buds for an expected accuracy of around 10% error, or you can go up to 400 buds per sample for increased accuracy. Some tips and tricks for sampling buds. The more you sample, the more you will know what you are dealing with. For efficiencies, focus your sampling areas into groups of similar varieties and microclimates. When high levels of devastation are expected, it is recommended to start sampling from blocks with the best chances of survival first, so the efforts can be focused on those blocks that have the most potential for production. Be prepared with a system ready to tag and label your samples with information such as variety, location in the block, and where on the vine you took the samples, so you can track the results after processing. You will be sampling one full cane per vine up to the seventh bud, this will result in five buds per cane, as you will be checking from buds three to seven. Thus, if you are collecting 150 buds per block, you will need to collect the 150 buds divided by five buds per cane for a total of 30 canes. Collect samples randomly from vines within each designated area. Take samples from various parts of the vine, such as close to the head, mid corridon and the end of the corridon as hardiness can be variable. The samples will need to be brought inside and warmed up for 24 hours either inside a plastic bag or set into a pail of water. 
This will prevent desiccation of the bud and allow time for the damaged tissue to brown and become visible prior to dissection. So what do you look for when dissecting the buds? You want a very sharp blade to make shallow slices through the top of the bud till you can visually see the primary bud. The primary bud is the one in the middle and is the largest. You will continue to make thin slices further down into the bud to next find the secondary bud, which will be the next largest. Finally, change the angle of the cut to expose the tertiary bud. Tertiary buds are not fruitful, but they will help provide leaves to keep the vine growing for another year. You are looking for brown tissue in the actual bud tissue itself. It is okay if some brown tissue is in the vegetative tissue surrounding the bud. Record the results on a simple spreadsheet so that you can determine if there is a pattern in the block, on the vine, or on the cane as to where the damage has occurred to help inform any adjustments to the pruning decisions. The bud hardiness chart is also used as a tool by some people to decide where to start pruning in their vineyard by looking at which varieties might be hardier, and thus where you can start pruning with the least amount of risk if further cold damage occurs. But what if the temperatures were extreme enough? There might be tissue damage beyond the buds and into the trunks of the vine. In this case, wait until outside temperatures are above 4 degrees Celsius for a few weeks before cutting into the trunks to assess. Healthy buds and phloem tissue under the bark should be a bright green. Inner xylem tissue will be a duller creamy white. Any discoloration or browning is indicative of tissue damage. Assessing damage to the xylem and phloem transport of tissues in the trunk or cordons can be difficult and sometimes not visible until after the buds have started to grow in the spring and then collapse due to the damage in the vines. So how do you adjust your pruning now that you know what the levels or damage are in the vineyard? The ultimate goal with pruning is setting up your vine for long-term production and health. This goal is the same even when you've experienced winter damage to the vine. The reasons why we prune vines are still to control vegetative growth, maintain architecture and longevity of the vine, plus manage the crop load. The loss of crop and established architecture with the winter damage moves those future goals and the focus of this year is to balance the vegetative growth and get back to all three goals. So what else should you take into consideration when making pruning decisions? The viticulturist from Artera Wines Canada shared the quick reference chart they use to help guide normal pruning decisions by assessing vigor of the vines. If there is good evidence to believe the vines are alive, then you can next move to assessing if you need to renew zero, one, or both the cordons. Viticulturists recommend replacing cordon when you have too much space, which is more than eight inches, or in the case of winter damage, if you suspect damage to the vascular tissue or buds that will result in gaps. Next, you need to determine if you had the correct number of ideal uprights the vine could reasonably grow and support by looking at last year's growth. You do not want uprights that are too weak to reach the top wire or are less than diameter of a standard pencil. Too weak growth tells you that you are asking too much of the vine by leaving too many uprights. However, you also don't want uprights that grow too strong. These are commonly called bull canes and will pull resources from the rest of the vine. They're not as hardy and will not produce fruit. The steps to determine the correct number of uprights on the vine are, first, count the number of ideal pencil size uprights. Next, visualize grouping the weak uprights to achieve the equivalency of one pencil for a count of one. Count the number of these groupings. Finally, count the number of bold canes and divide that by two. Add these three numbers up to get the target number of uprights that particular vine should be able to support for the upcoming year. Now we can go back to our percent bud mortality numbers to help guide how many buds you might need to leave to achieve the final shoot goals considering the winter damage to some of the buds. Some general guidelines for adjusting your pruning strategies are, first, Always submit your notice of loss prior to doing anything different from your typical annual practices in the vineyard such as renewal cuts to the trunk or removal of vines. Go through and use paint to mark the vines for production insurance as top loss if no good buds were found and a shoot needs to be brought up to renew. If you found you have under 16% bud damage, there is no need to change typical pruning techniques and it's a good time to consider cordon replacement. If between 16 and 30% damage, 
leave up to 50% extra buds via a kicker cane. You can overlap canes or leave longer spurs. Consider bringing up renewal suckers to establish future trunks. If 31 to 50% bud damage, leave double the number of buds by leaving extra canes or longer spurs. Over 50% or suspecting damage to the vine itself, oftentimes the best decision is to not do any more pruning in the dormant season and wait to see in the spring what growth does push and from where on the vine it pushes. The biggest caution with stopping all dormant pruning and why you want to be sure you do have significant bud loss is you don't want to end up with too many shoots to manage in the springtime. This will require a well-trained crew with which shoots to keep and an awareness of resulting difficulties with good spray coverage. You also don't want to leave too many buds and end up with too many uprights that will divide up the vigor to create more weak uprights. Some general notes for pruning. When making a cut, don't cut too close to the cane being left. Cut to leave an inch to allow dye back of tissue and not have it move into the good spur and negatively impact the sap flow. Always leave a spur as cheap insurance in case you need to replace a cane. It is quick to remove the shoot in the spring during normal shoot removal. Ideally, you want the Y to start four to six inches below the first cordon so you can have a nice arc without fracturing the canes. When in doubt, cut it out. If no new growth pushes from anywhere on the vine, then it is dead or dying and will need to be replaced. For layering, layering is an ideal option when vine loss is random throughout a block and if an adjacent vine has good healthy shoot that can be brought over. Go through the block prior to pruning in early spring and flag the vines you will be using to lay a cane so they do not get proned off by accident. Prune the rest of the vine to one bud per spur to allow more energy to support the layer cane. You should not try to layer from a plant that is four years or younger. It is also good to ensure the mother plant providing the shoot is healthy with no virus or disease. Keep the layered shoot connected to the mother plant for three to five years. Both must look healthy and thriving before you sever the ties. If there is no potential for layering, then you will need to order a whole new replacement vine from a certified nursery. Interplanting a new vine within an established vineyard it is not an ideal situation for establishing new vines due to the difference in care and competitiveness of a new vine compared to those already established around it. The third consideration with dead vines in a vineyard is to assess the percentage of dead vines in the block. At a certain point, it will be more economical from a management point of view to pull out the whole block and replant. For new vines with winter damage, you can cut higher at 10 to 12 buds and wait to see if you have any green tissue. Better to make two cuts even though it'll cost labor to go back twice. You don't want to leave all the growing tissue because you will weaken all the shoots instead of focusing the growth for shoots you are most likely to keep. Don't leave too many buds on the wire when you lay down the vine to the wire. Spring is the next opportunity to assess potential damage and make adjustments to management strategies. Weak or uneven growth of shoots up to the top can be indicative of vascular damage in the main trunk or cordon. When cutting back weak vines to two to three buds, plan to instruct shoot thinners when they come through in the spring to look for something new pushing from the latent buds down below on the trunk when they only see a few buds were left up top. If the vine forces growth down low as suckers, you should suspect trunk damage reducing sap flow and preventing the support of a full canopy on top. In this case, a vineyard manager should consider bringing up some suckers to renew the trunk. If no further damage occurs, then you can take six to eight clusters for the winery next year and remove the trunk. Please note, if you're going to bring up replacement shoots, then you need to take them into account when determining the total number of shoots the vine can handle when calculating how many uprights to aim for. The goal is to replace the vine in two to three years by bringing up two shoots. Year two, you are able to lay down both uprights then next year choose one to keep and lay down a second arm to be back in the structure you want. When retraining shoots up to the replacement trunk, you want to try and choose canes in good directions and not growing out into the tractor row. Don't leave training the shoots too late in the spring because young shoots can break off easily. Modified cartons can be used to protect new growth and provide guidance for upright growth. Plan to remove leaves from the shoots after training to encourage lignification of shoots and to toughen them up. Make sure to cut the trunk high to allow for dieback and not affect the new growth and the old trunk can be used as support to help train the replacement shoots upward 
or hold the cartons in place. If making the cuts in March or April when disease pressure is the highest, paint the large cuts to protect against infection. If you do find signs of trunk vine disease, plan for the following winter to continue to cut down the trunk until you no longer see dead tissue and then make the final cut three to four centimeters below the observable disease. Ideally, you want to leave at least a stump length that is double the diameter of the trunk you have cut. Any infected material should be destroyed by burning or taken to the landfill. Do not over fertilize the regrowth shoots as they could become volcanoes if pushed too hard. Plan for a tight mildew spray program and keep all new growth protected to ensure you are getting good spray coverage with strong growing canopies. Also plan to scout blocks for signs of crown grawl, which can increase following a freeze event. Finally, some questions to ask oneself as a vineyard manager in business when planning long-term recovery of a vineyard are, are the site issues such as cold pocket, drainage issues, or soil fertility issues ones that will need to be addressed and corrected for any potential replant projects? Was there an issue with the planting such as mismatched cultivars to site? Would a different rootstock choice be potentially helpful? Were there prior health issues with the plant, such as disease or virus? It is recommended that leaving spare parts, such as multiple trunks, or replacement kicker canes, such as suckers, growing under the vine, are important for grafted vinifera cultivars. Or leaving extra spurs that can always be cut off when tying or suckering, depending on the season, the winter, or frost risk. And also exploring practices, such as covering the graft union with soil or geotextiles during the winter. We hope you have found this quick overview helpful. If you require more information on a particular topic touched in the video, please reach out to the BC Grape Growers Association or the BC Wine Grape Council for more resources and upcoming events.